good afternoon ladies and gentlemen i had a very cold drink last night so it's going to it was hurting right now uh so this is a decade back i was uh, working with uh, an edutech brand which shall not be named uh it later on became a multi billion dollar brand and now i think it's on the verge of shutting down i'm responsible for neither of the things i worked one year with them and uh, one of the most interesting experiences i had was <clears throat> when i met a a trusty of a famous school chain they have schools all over india he was a big proponent of offline sales and we were trying to sell him an online school product he asked me this very simple question and somehow it still resonates with me till date where is the personal touch when you're trying to sell something online how do you bring that personal touch when you're trying to market something online and it still remains with me until today when we execute campaigns on behalf of brands uh we keep that in mind however it has been a decade since then and brands have successfully overcome that challenge to a very large extent to the extent that sometimes when uh you have your customers uh they become so loyal that they actually become your brand ambassadors that personal touch has come into such a great extent now and they become your real life influencers influencers you don't have to pay rather they pay you for your products and that's something a brand can only dream of and uh, today we have a panel of uh, founders and co-founders of uh, such brands who have made a name for themselves that their customers are actually some of their biggest uh, promoters they go and they talk about you everywhere they talk about you organically on social media and i'm saying this because i have discovered this to a very very large extent in the last few days and um, and it's very interesting so let's start with uh, uh, a discussion on how you were able to build that kind of loyalty using the digital marketing ecosystem uh, i'll start with you sne it's a very uh, your brand is a very unique brand so how were you able to create that uniqueness around you that today uh, at today we can see that the pet uh, care industry is huge and pet parents are consciously taking decisions of feeding their kids the best available in the market how were you able to distinguish yourself uh, you know yourself in that particular sp space which is so crazy and what was your elaborate strategy let's you know just take us through your digital marketing journey from the time you started till date so we started doxy around 10 years ago that means that we were the first the initial brands in the category uh, we did not have any best practices to follow we did not have any brands to look up to which made it more exciting but more challenging so we had to basically reinvent everything so while researching the industry uh we had to do a lot of ground work so while researching the industry we figured that this is a highly unregulated industry so there are no compliances and there are no rules as such for brands to follow so much that it was not even recognized as food industry by fssi till last year so uh we started researching the gaps first we saw that this industry is a by product industry so whatever is the garbage of other industries like leather and uh, meat like hair beak nails it's all glued together into a treat and then it's it's sold so we wanted to change that so these are called raw hides so dogs are compulsive chewers they have to chew something hard and brands took advantage of that so they just glued everything which is a by product of others and made it into a treat and because it was unregulated people didn't figure that then things started changing so we saw this gap that this is a by product is extremely unhealthy people are not reading labels so we thought that this is a challenge and this is a gap we have to change that and then millennials started to become pet parents and they were more aware pet parents so they were reading labels and they were demanding for healthier pet treats so our uh, whole goal was to find a treat or food which is healthy and which is nutritious and which is a by which is a uh, alternate to raw hide then we stumbled upon this uh, product called churpi it is a himalayan uh, yak chew it is a centuries old human 
food which is highly highly nutritious 60% protein high in calcium so we thought this is a hero product all our lives we try to find we try to make a mediocre product look good by good marketing here this was this hero product sitting right in front of us so we thought we have to you know launch this as a treat so we researched it further we uh, kind of automated the production uh, process so basically the biggest challenge was finding the right product which we perfected so no amount of good marketing can help you succeed if your product itself is not good so we first perfected the product identifying the gap is important then we saw that this is a perfect dental treat it is healthy so we then have to find the right channel to launch it so we thought that uh, people pet parents they trust vets a lot so then we started talking to a lot of vet the doctors they were convinced that this is the product which is which is not existing in the category yet so we started talking to we, we did a lot of events through them then we were convinced that now we are ready to launch the brand then doxy the brand name came then a lot of branding exercise your packaging has to be good then you are you have to be present where your customers are so we figured what are the marketplaces available our own website then what are the uh, you know uh, more developed in uh, nations like western countries so we started launching in different countries to build trust in this product in india so when people saw that there are people talking about this product in other countries even indians then they started to follow because this is a premium product so this is what we you know did in last 10 years and now um, i'm very proud that we are one of the biggest uh, manufacturer and exporter of this product we are present in 30 countries biggest market is us followed by uk india is our bet for next 10 years india is evolving a lot of pet parents are now so the uh, the new campaign which you see label padega india for humans we started that 10 years ago for dogs so which we continue to you know still do so yeah this is the journey yeah lab reading labels is a very recent phenomena i think 20 years back nobody was reading anything yeah. now we read everything and we keep taking decisions on those basis so anything specific you you've done online for uh, in terms of promoting it taking it to the millennials um we do a lot of so amazon is a big uh, platform for us so within amazon it's not as straight forward as just you know uh, making your product live and it will start selling there also we did a lot of iterations a lot of you know uh, ab testing uh, as simple as your listing uh, image the video that goes along your descriptions so we kept changing it and maybe the 10th uh, version worked for us uh, then is your influencers they play a you know major role so your word of mouth is very important but word of mouth you cannot control but the next best thing is your testimonials and reviews which you cannot which you can control by you know by creating that uh, you know uh, user experience for your customers so we have really good reviews for our uh, products online which really is helpful for reaching the next set of customers so that is something which we do then your website optimization uh, search engine optimization search engine or optimization is now moving from google to amazon which is our greatest learning because people used to search on google earlier but now they go to amazon and then search for what amazon is the premier sponsor of this event is going to be very happy with those statements yeah. <laughs> so yeah so we are seeing that you know majority of our searches are coming from amazon and then they, then people also move to our website and then they go back to amazon and you know uh, buy the product so yeah these are the things which we keep doing and this is not one of uh, one time activity you have to consistently do it every day odita uh, my wife vouches for true browns so my my colleagues wear true browns uh, my clients wear true browns like whenever i go and visit them and i know this because they tag themselves a lot of times and uh, on stories and they tag your brand name uh, I don't think this was a phenomena a couple of years back. Uh what did you do differently that it has become synonymous with an urban chic look? True Browns as a brand. Is there any specific thing you followed online? What was your you know there's a it's 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 so difficult to be there uh online when you have crazy e-commerce aggregators all the time spending such big amounts of money. How do you distinguish yourself? Was there any specific performance ad strategy you had? or seo or anything which did not which worked for you or did not work for you firstly thank you so much for having such 
I'm taking two pairs of true browns for my wife Absolutely. after this session. <laughs> we also have menswear now, so. <laughs> um, so um, I think I agree with Sne. If your product is not right, no amount of digital marketing or any kind of marketing can work. And uh, what uh, definitely worked for us was the right positioning of the product in terms of what we are offering, the problem that we are solving, and the price point that we are giving for the quality of the product. So the, we defined the problem very clearly that we will get you closer to the roots. We will give you ethnic wear, but in today's language. So we will give you urban ethnic wear. That, and who is the customer? Modern, independent, working women. So while, when we defined these two areas and we clubbed both of them is when our product came out. Um, the point that we stuck to what we are offering, what we are solving for is actually uh, what worked for us. Um, uh, to the point that when we launched on marketplaces, this is a couple of years back, uh, our, we became one of the top three brands. Uh, the moment we launched. So it was very clear that there is a need of this product and we are giving at the right price point and we are solving for a problem. The spike that you're talking about um, over the last two years is a lot of effort on brand communication uh, that essentially started actually about three years back. And last two years we really uh, tripled down on it uh, doing a lot of efforts in different verticals, like in different um, areas of brand communications. So from um, bringing our story to our customer through the campaigns that we do, uh, we've stuck to what we are as a brand and we talk about it in our brand campaigns. That resonates with our consumers. And when they find that consistency in, the, in our communication, in the product that we do, uh, they become our uh, uh, spokesperson people, right? So that has worked for us. Influencer marketing has worked for us tremendously well. So when we started um, brand communication, uh, we had to reach our consumers and find the right communities to get associated with. So uh, uh, going very aggressive on influencers, finding the right influencers for the brand, and uh, reaching out, tapping out to their communities is what led uh, to the brand scaling up. SEO that you've mentioned is something, in fact, we, we've, we did it. It's, it's something that we have to actually, as a company, triple down on it. That was not the reason, that was not the exact reason for the scaling up that happened in the last two years. So it was multiple strategies. Multiple strategies, a lot of effort in brand communication and talking about what we are doing and the reach through influencer marketing. So the bottom line is you have to have a good product. A bad product Absolutely. won't sell, however try hard you try. Uh, Anshita, she mentioned influencer marketing. I think that is also a very important part of your product strategy, if I'm not mistaken. And if you've done campaigns uh, around influencers, how did it work for you? What were the learnings? How do you choose your influencers? I know one way to choose your influencers is exactly to find influencers with curls. Yeah. What are the other ways to choose your influencers and, um, you know, have they really helped your product grow um, across various, you know, various platforms? So, it's easy to find people with curly hair, but it's not easy to find someone who resembles the customer persona that you're chasing after, right? And on top of that, we know the customer that we're serving and we also know who they aspire to be and that's who the influencer should be. You can't pick an influencer that's a little too close to your customer because maybe they want to be somewhere else, right? Um, so we try to find influencers in a couple different buckets. Of course, they need to be aspirational, um, but they can also either be at the stage where our customer is right now, right now in their product life cycle in which they've just found the product, they're a beginner, they don't know too much, and the influencer is in the same boat. So their content resembles the customer very closely. Then we have a second tier where this person is someone who knows a lot about curly hair. So they're ready to educate the customer. They can talk about things the customer even doesn't know. And they're teaching. Then there's mega, mega influencers that are more just for outreach. They build the aspiration of this is who you want to be and this is who you'll become once you start using Fix My Curls. So I think these are the three buckets in which we have influencers. And then strategy just follows. Um, 
according to which bucket they fall into but we we focus on vibe a lot and that's just something that i've had to inculcate in all of my content strategists at fix my curls is look for a vibe it's a very specific vibe i don't know how to explain it but give us an example of an influencer who matched the vibe um someone we would know i'm trying to think someone big that everyone in this room knows definitely i don't think i have a name like that because we don't work with really big influencers firstly i have to put that out there like we don't work with people who have over 3 400 thousand followers i think we're always working with people under that range because after that the audiences are just too broad and it doesn't work for us we're in a niche we're not selling just any shampoo conditioner we're selling styling products that is a completely different and new category which it's taken me 5 years to educate people and it's also taken 5 years for me to have enough competition to think okay the market is growing so we've very literally built out hundreds of influencers in our category like from scratch you know we've messaged them we've told them hey you have curly hair can we teach you about your hair and then do you want to teach other people so we've had to deal with it very differently because our category didn't exist we were one of the category makers so for us we needed to be a super sure about the product of course which is what everyone's talking about but Uh, most of all we had to be ready to really teach people from scratch and be very patient with influencers because we didn't get them ready made uh ragu um you have some of the best uh, solid wood designs i've seen online yeah and uh, i discovered i'm sorry i discovered it just day before yesterday uh, so um i want you to specifically focus on um, data when it comes to say learnings in terms of what were the data points you look for you look for when you are uh, devising your digital marketing strategy is it are those data points based on your online sales are you are they based on your customer feedback what exactly are you looking at and how do you use that data to devise your complete digital strategy and what would be your suggestion for see this is specifically for younger startups startups which are just you know uh, consumer brands which are just starting in what what do should they specifically look at uh, thank you uh, so uh, so we are into furniture industry made of uh, shisham wood so how we started back in 2009 was everybody was already buying furniture and uh, everybody was happy not happy they were okay with it so we uh, so we kind of got feedback from our very early consumers they were saying oh nice lakdi ka furniture hai ye bhi milta hai it's a, it's, a, it's and it's affordable as well so we started with suggesting a problem that uh, the furniture that you already buying made of plywood or something is not good enough and you all know it and which is why you are looking for wooden furniture because it lasts longer so we started suggesting and also very aesthetically pleasing oh, thank you so much for this so we, uh, so so we started suggesting this problem and offering a solution at the same time uh so what we need to do uh, was to make sure that we keep suggesting this problem so one of the data points which may not be related to consumer per se uh, so you, uh, we we understood that a, a lot of people face problems in the monsoon season about uh, drawers not opening or doors not opening creak creaking sounds creaking sounds and all and we knew that furniture which is made from shisham wood that we do will not have such problems so we used to make sure that we go aggressive on marketing in monsoon season because that's when people are people will face these problems with their existing furniture and that's when they'll find a solution in our product so the data points may not just be related to the, the your consumer like his behavior or her behavior but related to your products as well so i would say to consider both the data points product and the consumer and another thing that we sort of did was uh, so that if somebody is 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 looking to buy dining table he'll be, he or she will be more inclined to 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 think about it while having dinner at any table you know that, okay let's buy a new dining table so we started showing products based on their daily routine like this is the this is the time when they'll be looking for a study table or this is the time when they'll be looking for a dining table or a sofa so these are a few data points based on the behavior one int- uh, interesting thing which i believe is interesting we did was Uh, to try to uh, visible to be visible to the customer at the first thing in the morning when he wakes up and goes for the daily routine in the washroom we used to make sure that 
that, that's the first ad he sees or he she sees, you know, when he opens Instagram or Facebook, which we, which I believe every one of us do. Yeah, everybody spends exactly. a lot of time in the bathroom in the morning. And we realize that you know, different uh, geographically and uh, demographically, different customers have different times when they'll be opening their phone for the first time. So we started tracking those times as well and started showing ads that way. So these are the few data points which I would consider. I also tell you, men will spend more time than women in the washroom. So you will have to show them multiple ads. I'll go with you on this, yeah, sure. <laughs> Harsh, since I started this conversation about personalized, uh, you know, somebody asked me what's your, you know, what's, what's the personalized experience a person gets when, in, when they are going somewhere online. Um, your, your company specifically is, uh, you know, choosing ethnic wear is a very different experience because your two customers will will look at the same product in two different ways, despite of the fact that they both can afford it. So I want you to you know, elaborate on what challenges you've been able to overcome using your digital, you know, this digital marketing ecosystem, considering that one of the easiest ways is a lot of celebrities wear your clothes. So people actually look at that and get very happy and then they want to purchase it. But ex what, what exactly happens, because I've seen people going for ethnic wear shopping, they will actually drop something because they did not like one particular line of design on their outfit. Am, am I right? This happens. So what happens online? Like, how do, you, how do you overcome that using online digital ecosystem? So I agree with everybody on the panel that first and foremost, a product has to be in place. And uh, what we realized as a brand was that a lot of the ethnic wear uh, players specifically were not very aware of the technicalities of the fabric which is the actual thing which makes the garment and that's where we started and all our products we start uh, we are vertically integrated from yarn to the complete product uh, we do everything in house because we produce very very specialized fabrics uh, nothing is market bought and that makes the garment very, very comfortable and very durable. So, uh, which was not the case with most ethnic wear. Ethnic wear may hot hamesha hai tha ki dekhne mein achha lagna chahiye. Comfort ka koi mindset hi nahi tha. So, it, but this is something which we've bought in as a brand. And uh, to the fact that we don't do any customizations at all uh, because everything is pre-ready we ship within 24 hours of receiving an order. So that's another void that we filled. They need that garment last, last minute. So most of the ethnic options are not available off the shelf. But we provide sizes from extra small to triple XL uh, right there and then. So you can just walk out um, with whatever you like. And of course, uh, there is a huge range that we offered because customer tastes do vary a lot and also on the use case it's very different. So we have a classic collection where we do the classic Malmal collection. Then we have a wedding wear collection which is more occasion wear. We also have a studio line which is uh, towards Indo Western, Western silhouettes. So it all depends. And also uh, I would say that being online you have to cater to the world as a market and more for us, uh, India as a market. And at, there was a time when the Indian woman uh, from south to north, east to west, was dressing up very, very differently. But I feel now, thanks to social media, it's not the case, especially with the next generation coming in. They are consuming the same media. They're watching similar movies, uh, following similar trends. Uh, so what we have seen is whatever is kind of a bestseller in Delhi. A similar product would be a bestseller down south in Bangalore as well. So it's very global. Hota ja hai. And that has helped brands like us. Otherwise, it would have been very, very difficult to produce different kind of things for different markets. But it's becoming very global and uh, it's just about how you position it. And uh, that's how we've done it. And like you said, Influencer marketing has, I think we've, we were one of the very first few brands to kind of crack it and we were very lucky that uh, we had very good quality influencers wearing our products, uh, that too very organically because that's another thing which is very important. Uh, we just had a chat where you asked me 
how do we get all the celebrities to wear our outfits so thankfully the <coughs> indian film industry is based in bombay so waha ka climate conditions are such that they want to wear something light something comfortable something breathable which is malmal so it's like the answer to their everyday need and that's how we see so many celebrities wearing malmal it's not because we are paying them for it or there is any other reason attached it's just pure uh, because they like the look of the garment and it's comfortable for them so imagine the costs if you were paying them probably would have <laughs> i wouldn't be sitting here then <laughs> uh anjuta what what is your social media strategy any specific uh, social media platforms where you guys have stood out anything um, you want to talk about which you don't want to talk about <laughs> no so very specifically of course instagram works really well for us and there we very literally have a very strict grid that we follow um we don't post randomly everything is extremely well thought out i know it is for most brands um but for us it's to a very large extent like we don't just post something because it's trending we post it with a lot of intention and it has to be directed at our community because again uh, our community is is very specific it's very close knit and we've built it from the ground up um we're not in a more generic category like skincare or makeup so instagram of course works really well for us then uh, youtube youtube shorts work really well for us and the strategy on youtube we've tried long form content and it's worked to a certain extent to help educate customers but we're not sure about conversions on youtube we also do use quora and reddit um which i won't talk too much about because, because you're anonymous because you're anonymous there we are we're very anonymous there but um quora and reddit work really well for anyone who is thinking about social media you may not think about these platforms but trust me that's where people are talking about your product that's where you'll find the best criticism about your product and you'll know what to fix um your the best way to make a good product is i mean you should listen to the haters and all of them are on reddit or quora and you'll know what to fix i'm on reddit for hours and it's very interesting uh, just and just the grid part which you mentioned mm. any specific learnings from that because that's something which young brands try to do fail then go into trending reels i mean this is a subsequent question because i just so, yeah so see we learned that you need to have a good mix of content that is visually appealing a you need to have a face and you need to have something that resembles a meme or some type of text but it shouldn't be more than one sentence and that's it that's as long as your meme should be if it's longer it should be longer because it's a conversation between uh, someone and someone in yeah. the meme i know this sounds very odd maybe to a specific group of people here but the people who are on instagram will understand what i'm saying um but we figured we have to have a mix of product face and something funny or community oriented and just keep repeating that cycle over and over and what happens is genuinely when people are scrolling on their instagram they are blindly scrolling right so they need to be able to recognize your brand colors and text placement and image placement everything needs to be the same and obviously we didn't have that decided from day 1 but what i did know is that the grid needs to work a certain way and if you see our grid right now and scroll past the last 300 posts they will all have a very specific placement um you'll notice it now that you know but to customers it's just something that we're tapping into subconsciously and then when they're scrolling on their phones at 11:30 in the night before they know it they've tapped and they've liked a meme without really knowing if they find it funny or not but they know it's fix my calls okay uh sne uh, you have uh... millennials as your most a lot of millennials as your customers and they are very opinionated about everything any specific listening tools uh, you use for your brand specifically and um, you know how do you manage if there is any negative chatter around yeah see we as brand we generally feel that social media channels platforms they are not for hunting customers but these are for cultivating relationships and listening tools become very very important for us to do exactly that so we currently use simplify 360 for listening to conversations and like we just are discussing that people are everywhere talking about you without you knowing so it becomes very important for you to 
track down those conversations and be present there and it, you should be talking to these customers. And listening is not just for uh, collecting data and uh, replying to these con conversations, but for us, it kind of becomes a data point to launch our new products also. For example, we uh, listen and monitor to general dog parent conversations. Then we identify trends that what are the problems or new trends or new treats or uh, you know general conversations they are talking about. We figured that. Uh, one of the pain points of pet parents is fungal, bacterial infections in dogs. Then we thought, what do we do within our product range to help you know, uh, pet parents to solve that? We launched uh, a treat which, is, which has uh, turmeric in it, which kind of fights infections. So it became our new range for them. Then you know, joint pain, then eyesight, then fur and their hair. So these things kind of, you don't know unless you're talking to customers. And you can't directly talk to a lot of them. So if you need to have a bigger sample size, you have to talk, uh, listen to larger conversations, which, can, which should not be just, say, India. Pet parents are more evolved in other countries. So you can combine learnings from various countries under one dashboard. So you can automate a lot. And listening then beyond these conversations, you can uh, now listen to your reviews on Amazon, on Google. You have to reply. So, Manually, it becomes a hassle. If you have multiple pages for different countries and different channels on uh, different platforms, it kind of becomes confusing for your team also. So I feel that a, uh, a single platform managing all your conversation under one roof becomes very, very uh, essential for a brand, a growing brand. Uh, Raghu, I had this question for you because uh, uh, any interesting online campaign you've seen of a non-competitor which you would like to emulate because what happens is sometimes uh, you know when you look at competitors you end up using almost similar strategies it happens with younger brands case ne ye kiya hai to let's try to do this this will work for us anything which is specifically uh, which you have liked which is a which is not from your industry and something which you have emulated in terms of a strategy so i'm glad this question uh, that you are about this question so we have been actually thinking about uh, you know uh, doing something like this, for example, what the Hutch did with that pug or the Vodafone did with those Zuzus. You know, to be able to promote your mm. products uh, from an, through an avatar, not through a, through a celebrity or... So the, the good point, the good thing about this is uh, you can reposition your product anytime. You know, all you need to do is, is to change the personality of your avatar based on the current trends. And the moment you do that, based on the current trends, your, uh, the positioning of your product changes as well. And you're not dependent on that your product is positioned in, in certain way. How do you change the positioning now after two years when the, when the trends has changed? Or you're not looking for some other celebrity with a different uh, personality to, to reposition the product. So if you can market your product from, through an avatar, it's become so much easy to reposition at any point of time. So this is something that we're also looking to crowdsource this idea post Diwali. Yeah. OK. Odita, uh, you, uh, you know, Clothing industry is such that I think even Harsh will agree that trends change very quickly. Things change very quickly. I'm sure you go for new product. I'm sure you go for new product launches and uh, uh, yeah. <laughs> you go for new product launches. And I'm sure you're also doing something with events around it. So, any specific strategy where you do that? Like, uh, just 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 one minute. Yeah. Can we be like 60 second yeah, answer? Quickly. <laughs> yeah. Uh, cover this. You're saying about product launches. Yeah. Yes, definitely. So, ek hai ki aap bas product launch, karte ro, launch karte ro, right? But then what is the difference of becoming a brand versus just selling products on a marketplace, right? Uh, we have, like every time we launch a product, there is a campaign behind. Like every time we launch a new range, there is a campaign behind it. And that campaign essentially covers the story of the woman and the product that we are offering. So we marry again the two things and then every time we launch, we have like a campaign. And that really, see basically you have to tell the because that's what consumer ultimately remembers and that's how you become a brand and that's how the resonance and what she said, right? How do you, how, how do customers just, they see it and they know that this is this brand, right? So one of the things that we do is very consistent campaigns with every uh, collection launch. Harsh, 
30 seconds. No, no, it's okay. 30 seconds. I want you to conclude something you want to give to the younger brands because you have grown and you've grown very well across the country, offline and online. What do you suggest to any younger, younger brands, specifically when it comes to digital strategy? Um, you know, you need to just give me an answer in 30 seconds. What do you, what is a one line of thought? For, for me, I would say, which is an unpopular opinion in the D2C space, is that first and foremost, of course, the product has to be right and your PNL has to be positive. Oh, I love if that your answer. business is not making money, so something is not right. We Agar don't have any venture capital. So, yeah. so then, because the, because we are not in an industry where there is a lot of high R&D, a lot of high capex, or anything. So why is your business not making money at the end of the month? If it's not the case, so rewrite your rules, go back to the table. But even if it's small, till the time your company is not generating cash flow, then you're not doing it right. So this is what I would conclude by saying, ke paisa banana is the, the primary the motive, motive of, of business. Of everything, yes. <laughs> yes. So two, two things we take back from this session, your product has to be brilliant and make money. Thank you guys, thank you for being patient. Thank you.